Welcome to the Los Angeles Sentinel Daily Brief. This is where we talk Black and talk back to the headlines that are impacting the Black experience. I'm Mio Anderson, and here's what you need to know for today. An Oklahoma judge recently granted Tulsa race massacre survivors to sue for reparations. Now the three survivors, all over 100 years old, are demanding justice for the 1921 racist attack that destroyed Black Wall Street in Greenwood, Oklahoma. Joining me now to discuss the latest developments on the Tulsa massacre survivor case are the survivor's attorney, Demario Solomon Simmons. Welcome to The Daily Brief. Hey, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk to you and your listeners. Can you talk to us about the latest court ruling with the um, with the survivors of the Tulsa massacre riots of 1921? Uh, last week, we finally received an order from our judge, a written order, based upon a hearing that we had on May 2nd, 2022, including our last three known living survivors, 108-year-old Mother Viola Ford Fletcher, 107-year-old Mother Leslie Benefield Randall, and 101-plus Hughes Van Ellis, we call him Uncle Red. We had an outstanding, powerful hearing in front of our judge, Judge Caroline Wall here in Tulsa County. And she ruled from the bench, which is unusual, stating that a portion of our case could move forward. But we were waiting on her written order to give us the specifics of what, uh, how we move forward. We received that late last week, and it confirmed that our three living survivors, their case will move forward to represent our entire community. This is the first time in history, anywhere in the nation, where a case related to a, a race massacre from 100 years ago, for Black people's uh, communities been destroyed, it's going to be adjudicated in a court of law. Many African Americans didn't even know about Black Wall Street until the 100th anniversary. Uh, but now we know, and now we're being more educated. But you also started the Justice for Greenwood Foundation. Can you talk yes. to us about that? Well, first, let me just start. When you said people didn't know about Greenwood and, and the massacre, I was one of those people. I went to middle school at Carver, George Washington Carver Middle School on Greenwood Avenue. And I never learned anything about the massacre, about Greenwood or the Black Wall Street. It was not until I went to college at the University of Oklahoma and learned in a class, intro to African-American studies class by my professor who told me, told the class about this place in Tulsa. I literally raised my hand and told him what he said was not true. I was astounded. I was embarrassed. I was upset that I didn't know this. And I made it my mission that I would spend every inch of my energy, time, resources, whatever power that I ever will receive to get to educate people about Greenwood and to get justice and reparations for the Tulsa Race Massacre. Now, how did you connect with Mother Randall, Mother Fletcher, and Uncle Red? In 2019, I, you know, they were doing a lot of performative uh, discussions and activities here in Tulsa, gearing up for the Tulsa Centennial because they wanted to utilize our pain, our destruction, the massacre that was perpetrated by them on us to enrich them. And then I talked to my buddy, another Los Angeles guy, uh, Professor Eric Miller. He's a professor there at Loyola Marymount. He had testified at Congress about H.R. 40 which is the bill for reparations, to study reparations nationally. And he was the only person out of about 18 people to testify that said something about Tulsa. So I reached out to him on Twitter. And I said, man, you know, it's been a long time, but I'm, I don't want to let this go. We got to figure out something. And I, I said, you know, we have a church here that's still here. Maybe we can use the church. And then we started researching from there. And we were looking at all different theories. And we thought about this public nuisance theory. We said, man, we think this can work. Then I got introduced and I met Mother Ramden. And I hadn't met her before. And then we finally filed the case in September 1st of 2020. Okay. But right before I filed the case, I learned about Mother Viola Fletcher on TV. I, she had turned 106 at the time. And they did a drive-by birthday party. Remember, this is all COVID. And they said she was from Tulsa. And I started looking into it. And I was like, oh, she's a massacre survivor. I found a grandson of hers 
who was okay. a friend of a guy I played football with 20 years ago. And then as I'm getting to Mother Fletcher and I go meet with her and visit with her family, I find out that she has a little brother named mm. Uncle Red, who's still alive, who was six months old to the massacre. So what does reparations look like for these three survivors? What does it look like to you? What are you seeking in the courts on their behalf? So a public mm -hmm. nuisance case says, look, that the nuisance was created during the massacre. And that, and that nuisance continues to this day. It's not for something that comes to them individually, per se. It's something okay. that comes to the entire community. What we're trying to do is show how a Black community can be rebuilt by those people who destroyed it. So as long as the ramifications of the massacre is still causing us problems, for instance, when they burnt down the largest owned Black-owned hotel in the nation that was owned by J.B. Stratford. All those jobs went away. All that money went away. All that commerce went away. So they still have, a, they have an obligation to rebuild what was destroyed. We were seeking a holistic, what we call an abatement plan. That's the legal terminology. We, you could call it reparations. We wanted a victim's compensation fund for those survivors and descendants. We wanted land rest restoration like what happened down at Bruce's Beach which I was out there in June and got a chance to go up to. Bruce. I was just about to bring it up. It's reminiscent of the process of those individuals from Bruce's family getting the justice that they so right. 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 We, we wanted a hospital built because we're the largest organ, largest community in Northeast Oklahoma without a hospital of the black community. We wanted to have a, a taxes abated. Our theory is if you are a survivor or a descendant of the massacre, and the, the city and the county are the people that did it, and they never re repaid you. Why should you have to pay fees and taxes to these entities? We wanted an accounting of all of the land that was taken. Right. We wanted a declaration from the court because these people have never admitted what they have done. We wanted money set aside for mental and emotional health counseling. Our people bear the brunt of the trauma that has been passed down through DNA. Before I let you go, I want to know what are the next steps with this case? How can our viewers, our LA Sentinel family keep up with the case? I mean, you know, I'm going to be keeping up with you, but how can we support? Go to justiceforgreenwood.org and sign up for our newsletter. We send out an email uh, basically weekly uh, with a lot of different information that we're, things that are going on because within the Justice for Greenwood Foundation, not only do we have this litigation, but we have an oral history project. And we have a huge community of descendants in the LA area. Make a donation to this work. It's not easy work. It's not inexpensive work. And you can stay connected with us when we put out the call and say, hey, this is what we need you to do. You can also go to a very active Instagram page, Justice for Greenwood. And then thirdly, keep us in your prayers. If we cannot win this, it's going to make it much more difficult to win anywhere else in this nation. One other thing, if I can just say this, we are going to be having a town hall, a virtual town hall meeting on August 25th. And I want you guys to be there because it's important. It's about DNA. They, they deny that a mass grave existed for 85 years. They finally had to admit that the mass grave existed. And so they resumed 14 bodies. And then they said, well, we want to identify these individuals and we got DNA, but we need black Tulsans to give your DNA so we can, if we can connect you to these individuals. But what we found at Justice for Greenwood and doing our research led by Professor Eric Miller is that they have no protocols for protection. So when you give your DNA, that it cannot be sold to anyone else. Also, you give your DNA, it can be, it can be a subject to a warrant and they can get anyone in your family for any crime. We should not be participating in those type of uh, programs without proper safeguards, because we know that law enforcement is racist. We know that law enforcement is discriminatory, and we know that they will lose our information against us in a discriminatory and racist manner. Not only that, when you said DNA and these things, I thought about Henrietta Lacks. And it's just so much injustice that Black people have suffered at the hands of white supremacy and white oppression. So yeah. I just want to thank you for your work. Like I said, open door policy. And we look forward to having you back. Thank you so much. Accountability is the term from Bruce's Beach to Greenwood. And thanks to attorney Solomon Simmons, it looks like Mother Randall 
Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red are going to have their day in court and justice. Now for the latest in black news and views, you wanna visit lasentinel.net. I'm Neil Anderson and you have just been debriefed. Thank you.